Hi and welcome to the Druid Gaming Channel. We're live on Twitch at the moment. Okay, so today we are going to play through the Settlers Online Adventure, Alibaba and the Young Woodcutter. Now it normally takes about 30 to 35 minutes to complete as I kill every camp on the island without using any blocks. I'll tick longer than usual because I'll slow the pace so you can have a chance to see what's going on. I'll do a separate video showing you how to set up your generals etc so that you can maximize the number of young woodcutter adventures you do during a two hour scout post run. Now uh, the method that I use is an amalgam of several solutions and my own battle simulator results and it's tailored to suit my mix of generals. Um, currently I use um, the Ghost General, uh, Tremble, Merry Christmas and Boris slash Sylvana and younger Gemini Generals. Now if you have fewer Generals than, than I use this solution will still work for you but it will take longer as you'll have to wait um, for each General to return before sending him or her out again. Because I don't use any blocks it doesn't matter that you've got fewer. I mean, you're just going to take them out using the appropriate general. Now, I don't do blocks as I'm happy to take the losses to gain more experience points with my generals. Um, they all bring back bonus XP from their victories. This is either due to built-in XP bonuses such as you have with Sylvana, Tremble or Merry Christmas or because every general also has the fast learner skill added and uh, maxed out. So I'll, I'll show you that in a second uh, so you know what I mean. But my priority um, in this solution is to maximize experience points for each adventure and to try to get three complete adventures and a fourth one started in the two hour scout run period. So um, the adventure is already running so I'm going to apply the observatory buff to speed up troop transport to the island. Then I'll send my quartermasters and the first wave of troops to the island. Um, after which we can take a quick look at the campaign map in detail while we wait for the first troops to arrive on the island. Okay. So. Just bear with me a second. Here's the observatory. That gives us two hours. Now I've already preloaded the troops. So these are the ones that I'm going to be sending. So like two and a half rows. Okay. First though, I'm going to send over some quartermasters. These are also preloaded. I shouldn't need all of those, but better safe than sorry. Okay. So I'm going to send over the first wave. I'll explain that in a second. There's a faster way to do this, but I just want to be precise in which ones I'm sending and the order in which I'm sending them. Right. Okay, that's all the ones I'm sending at the moment, as you can see there, embarking. So, just while we do that, I will 
switch over to show you this map. Okay. Okay. So, one second. So, I hope you can see the the pointer. There we go. Okay, so this is the adventure map that we're going to be looking at. And uh, this is a screenshot that I did and that I've marked up myself. So this map is unique to me and to the solution that you're looking at. So essentially, if you've played the adventure before, you, you'll have got the idea. The, uh, the landing area here, this is where the generals land. Now that is limited in size. Now I think it's something like 21 generals that I'm sending. They don't all fit there. So if I send them all over en masse... It's kind of potluck which one gets there first and where they land. And those that don't have space will end up going back into the star menu and all the troops will be taken off them. And that means more time during the, spent during the adventure reallocating the troops. Okay, so I send them over in effectively three waves. The first waves are now on their way. And when they land, you'll see that I immediately move them to this area here, SA1, staging area 1. And I'll move them there so that the landing area is free for the next wave or latecomers. Once the first generals are here in the staging area, then we'll start attacking the camps. And you'll see on the map I've numbered the camps. Uh, obviously C1, C2 are just camps with an identity number. Um, the red camps or the leader camps are the six of them. And you'll then see a further staging area here, here and here. Staging area four, the staging area five. Now essentially it's part of the game mechanics that you're not going to be allowed to use staging area two until leader camp one is gone. So similarly you can't use staging area three until camp l2 was gone okay so um really the game now is one of knocking out the camps in order and then shuffling your generals forward so that they've got shorter distances towards the target but also when they come back um you know the distance is shorter so you can send them out again now if you want to do part of this adventure or this solution to the adventure, you can omit the camps with the yellow numbers, C1, C2, C11, C6, C10, C12. They're kind of optional camps. And if you don't attack them individually, they will disappear when the relevant leader camp is knocked out. As simple as that, really. The white ones you need to kill. And I'll be showing you the troops and everything you need to do that. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I just wanted you to be able to see the map and to have an overview, you know, of what's uh, of what's going on. Right. Okay. So we're back at the home island now. So everything should be happening, hopefully, on the island. So I'm going to visit that now. If you're not familiar with the game, the islands are different for each adventure. So here we go, as expected. The first two of these will be quartermasters, usually. Right. Yep. So what you can do is transfer them if you wish. What I tend to do with the first one is just to disembark the troops and then send home. As I say, my priority is experience points and I do that in a sense by killing all the camps which means 
the losses are perhaps higher than you used to with a young woodcutter. I realise at lower levels, often your aim is to complete the adventure with losing as few troops as possible because they take time and resources to rebuild. I'm not in that situation anymore, so I'm just looking for XP. So now we've got probably the first two of the channels will be second. Okay. Right, these are the first ghost generals. I could attack from here, but as I say, I want to keep this area clear. So I'll transfer them to the staging area. There should be a third one turning up fairly quickly. In case you hadn't noticed, the, um, the generals are individually numbered and also their target camps are, are written on them. You know, it's part of the label. I do this because the young woodcutter is perhaps the most important adventure that, that I do. And um, it's sort of important from that point of view. But, um, sorry, it's had a bit of a, bit of a technical hitch. Wait a sec. I'll have to do. Sorry about that. Okay, so as you can see, we've got more generals landing, and the others, the first ones, are reappearing in the staging area. I think this will be a ghost. Should be. Yep. Sorry, I'm having some technical issues on um, another screen that I need to use later. But, um, right, so, as you can see, more generals arriving. So, here we've got 101. So, this is the first attack. So, it goes against Camp 1. One's for camp six, so we don't want that. So the next one should be a tremble, 103. It's not here yet. Unfortunately, the generals appear in whatever order they really want to. As I say, my main concern is to keep this area clear. Oh, a minute to 30 seconds for the others. Okay.
Right, we're just waiting for that. So I'm going to nip back to the island. And I'm going to set the second wave of generals coming over. No, back to the adventure. Okay, so now we're looking here, camp three. So this is marked up here, or oh, three there. So 45 mounted swordsmen, 135 mounted marksmen. Yep. Next one is one of four. There's a certain amount of guesswork involved here. You've got to leave a gap so that in timing so that this general that's on the move already can get to that camp and attack it before this general who I'm about to move and attack here enters that red zone because otherwise it'll be intercepted as you know. So it should be far enough back now for that to work. Now the next camp, because I'm kind of waiting for that to happen and this camp cannot intercept because it's a leader's camp, this is the next one I'm going after, which I called C5 on the map. And that's the ghosts. We have C5. again we have to pause we have to give this general time to attack this camp otherwise the ghost general might be intercepted this is a, a matter of experience I'm sure you can sit there with a watch and do the timing if you want Right, so that's that one on its way. Now we'll send a Boris or a Sylvana. We'll send uh, a general out to kill the leader camp L1 now. So this is the one. Oh yeah, L1. Just double check. I've been that occupied with doing the video that I haven't been checking the troops. So I'm hopefully I've set these up correctly. This is 24 mounted swordsmen, 171 mounted marksmen. Okay. And I'll send that on its way. Now when this L1 camp is knocked out, we can start moving troops here. This is a staging area too, if you remember. I'll just try and show you that. So, yeah, staging area two, it's at the bottom of the screen. They're about there.
Right, this map, this camp here, C6, it's an optional one, but we can take it out with a Mary. 08. We could have sent her earlier. I've had some technical issues behind the scenes with the videos, so normally I would have several more uh, generals already on the way attacking these camps, but don't worry. You're still you're still going to see what uh, you need to see. So the next one is number nine. So this one, as you can see, we can now move here. So it was nine. Just, as I say, this is the advantage of numbering them. It gives you an idea of the sort of order to place them in. One or three. That's the the general's already made an attack. That's just a quarter mass with more troops, just putting it out of the way. This is the second wave arriving just in time to be moved to the front line on staging area two. Now these ghost generals, they've, they've actually done their job. So one of the things that makes you efficient at doing more than one adventure during a scout um, hut run is having your troops ready to go again. So here we can see, I'm just going to go back. This is uh, general number two, 200 swordsmen and so on. He just needs 200 of those. And he's ready to go again, so I'm going to send him home. So he'll be waiting for us when we need him. This is number one. Needs 20 of those. 20 knights. 10 marksmen. 30 AM. 150 mounted marksmen. Yep. So that one's now full again. Send home. This is a third ghost one. This was 230 swordsmen. There we go. Refilled. Send home. Okay, just having a quick look to see. Yep, the second wave three minutes out, so we perhaps waited a tad too long for those. So what I'm going to do is return home. I'm going to get the third wave on the way anyway. There's just three Gemini generals in the last wave. It's fine. As you can see, the ghost generals travel really quickly. They're already home. As I say, I'm taking this at a nice steady pace. Obviously, the <laughs> technical problems haven't helped. Um... Yeah, you can see that general still on the way to attacking this camp. Uh, right, so let's get on with the job at hand. So C5 was there, that's gone. C6 is under attack, so this is camp C7. And we're going to use a tremble, 109, this one. You can see, C7. And we need 52 MS, got that, and 123 besiegers, yep. So that's correct. We are attacking. So that's that one underway. 
the next one is a Boris 110 yep come C8 now yeah, no troops so we need to add the right troops to this one so that's 14 mounted swordsmen and 181 mounted marksmen okay mount attacks and the one it's that one there by the time the attack passes this camp this general will be attacking it so we won't be intercepted right so the next one is actually the leader camp so when we knock out this red camp l2 with the tremble there we go this is the general tremble l2 175k is it no 30 ms 145 yep we've got that so we put the attack in there so right once that general knocks out that camp the staging areas either side of these cliffs will become available for us to launch the next stage of the attack however that's quite a long time long way away so what I'm going to do is normally I would do this straight away I'm going to apply a bronze horseshoe that will make the trip back not the attack but the trip back from the camps much faster for the generals so they'll get back here and we'll be able to use them again uh, more quickly um, but we can still carry on attacking it's just that the generals will have a long way to come back okay they'll be coming all the way back down from here so uh, nonetheless we'll have a go at that Hundred and seventy five knights. Attack Camp Nine. Right. This is where the second wave ones come in. I'm moving I'm looking at the numbers of the generals when I'm moving them I'm trying to group them together so it, they're easier to find now normally I would have been uh, much quicker bringing these generals forward it's just something you do intuitively you know when the second wave lands you get them forward to the staging area so that they can then do the long attacks here now it's possible by the time they arrive here L2 will have been knocked out so they'll actually move straight on to staging area 3 but 90% of the time the second wave generals are here and waiting by the time I've launched C9 and so then I will go on and attack that camp, that camp uh, that one, that one, that one and that and very often the most of those will be attacks launched from here so we'll have to see it now becomes a question of it's either or um, you know it's six or half a dozen of another because uh, this general will knock out this camp in about 30 seconds so do we launch the attack now from here to here or do I just move them up it's quicker moving them up you see and the return journey is a lot shorter so this playthrough won't be as quick as um, it normally is unfortunately seems as I'm trying to demonstrate the solution to you 
but I am a bit rusty with this. It's uh, because of the change over to Unity and everything. I haven't really done any adventures for a couple of months. Right, so that's gone. So now we can move troops forward. Uh, so we've done C9, so now we're looking for C10. So that's Boris 12. I'm trying to bring them forward roughly in the order in which I need to use them. So it'll just be quicker that way. As I say, there's no set order, um, <clears throat> but as I say, the way that I name my generals by giving them numbers and by putting on the target camps in the title, it means I can see their their role, their appropriate role, um, just by you know running the the cursor over them. It does make life a lot easier, especially in a a convoluted adventure like this one. The only thing is, of course, they're numbered for this adventure. Uh, if you if you're then using them on, on some other map and clan campaign adventure, it, it's a bit meaningless. But um, obviously, you can decide, you know, what you want to do. I mean, some people do tend to have a favourite adventure and play it endlessly to, um, you know, rock up the XP. So. You know, choose your favourite adventure and do it for that. Right, so we've now got these two. We're going to attack these optional camps. These are normally long gone by now. I can't remember the last time I had to do an attack from staging area three on these two. Normally it's always staging area two for at least those two and these two as well. So I'm a bit disappointed with that. Nonetheless, we press on. So C12, yep, and this is, right, 40 MS, 60 AM, and 115 mounted, yep. So that's another optional camp that we're going to knock out and get extra XP for. Next one is 2015. Right, yep. 0215 Mary, 36 MS, 104 AM, 75, yep. Two hundred and fifteen mounted marksmen, correct. Tack. Now I just need to be careful. I've already launched um, a general to attack that camp, so I need to give it a bit of a head start. If I launch this one too quickly, it'll get intercepted. So we're just hanging around. Yeah, it should be fine. So that's that one. And now we're going to launch the attack on the leader. 
this camp here is L3. Don't know if I can show you that. Yeah, it's in the, it's in the top corner. Right, okay. Yep, so that's the camp there. Forty MS, eighty AM, ninety five MM. Good. And that attack goes in. So that's the section of the map dealt with that I would normally deal with from staging area two or staging area three, which is what these two areas here are. Right, until this camp here is knocked out. I can't move anything to staging area 3, but I can launch attacks on these camps from staging area 3. This is staging area 4. Um, so let's just move that down there. To zoom in a bit. Right, that's the next one. Camp C15 only. So the showman should be right. 20 MS, 40 knights, 135 besiegers, fine. Launch an attack. So it's a long attack, and as you can imagine, when he's successful, he's got a long way to come back. That's why he's tasked with really only this one camp, because <laughs> he's going to be travelling all, <laughs> you know, for a long time. So let's have a look there. Two nineteen is the next one. Okay, fifty-two MS, one hundred forty-three. That's correct. Attack camp sixteen. This is camp sixteen. Okay, and now camp seventeen. So it's another Boris. This one's not really in the right place, but we'll give it a go. 195 knights. Okay. This is the second attack and last for this general. And then this camp here. This is L4. This is a leader camp. Mary, 104, we'll deal with this, wherever that, 108, right, okay. Right, so, Mary needs 35 MS, mounted swordsman, 180 mounted marksman, okay. So we've got the right troops allocated. Let's have a look. That one, yeah, the attack on the lead has not really begun yet, so we will send it. But we're still waiting. This general here that we sent is only there. So I just need, yeah, it's probably enough of a lead to send that. That's good. So that's the attack on L4 sent. So when that attack hits home, that staging area will be coming available. Actually, no, sorry. When that attack hits home, L4, that's the staging area. I'm getting confused. Sorry, just correct myself there. Um, right, that attack has gone in, so now L3 has been defeated, so now as you see, we can transfer troops here to staging area 4. Right, so what do we need? Right, transfer. 
we will take out leader five. Damn it, we need this one. <laughs> Again, bit rusty. That one should have been brought up earlier. But anyway, it's on its way. Won't take that long to get there. Then 107 Boris. These are the third wave of the young Gemini generals. They're going to be needed. So bring them up. Generals needed for the final attacks. Another Mary. As you can see, lots of duplicate generals means uh, these generals are moving into place while others are still retreating back from having just won battles. It does make it so much easier. And Boris 219, that one. Oh, right. He's, still, he's one of those still attacking. But I have a spare here, which is committed to one attack and it's done it, so... This again is the beauty of having multiple generals. This guy is going to step in and get into place while the allocated general here is mm, still completing his attacks. So as you can see, even though we're just moving into the um, SA4, staging area 4, uh, we've already taken out two of the camps and generals are on the way to knock out the other two. So that's fine. So we can actually press on with uh, uh, other attacks. So the next one is this. This is a leader camp L5. And we're going to take that out with Tremble 109. This is Tremble 109. And they need 65 swordsmen. I do use swordsmen in my... Solutions are cheap and easy to produce, just like recruits are at the other level. So that's that attack going in. Now we're going to take out this camp here, which is camp C18. Again, it's a tremble, this one. 175 swordsmen. And in fact, the uh, L4 camp has gone. So now the staging area, the final staging area is also open. But I may as well launch the attack from here as he's ready. This one's 42 MS, 133 mounted marksmen. There we go. So that attack's gone in. That's fine. So, this chap, I'm going to move this Boris. Oh, damn it. Sorry, I thought this one. Just waiting for this one. 
This is L5. Sorry, when this one is knocked out, the staging area becomes available. But it's not too bad. We've just got sort of five camps to go, five, six camps to go. I mean, the hard work is really done. If I were planning on doing the next uh, adventure straight away, you would be looking at these and sending them home. Like this one, for example. Just refill and send on the way. I would check what it is. So like C15, 20 ms. So that's 20. So that's what you'll you'll fill your time in while you're waiting for generals to come and go. You replenish your your generals. Right, so that's gone. So now we can move on for the for the last attacks. So I would just move these into the staging area for the last attacks. Trying to get them in some sort of order. So they're close to the targets. Hmm, I think I've just noticed a mistake in my numbering. So, <clears throat> 42, 133, right, that's fine. Attack that camp. Then C21, which is really that one. So, next one is this one, Camp C20. This is Boris 107. Here we go. Yep. Yeah. 28 MS. 31 knights.
and besiegers, of which we don't have enough at the moment, so... So that's why we bring quartermasters along. So I've just emptied the troops off the quartermaster so that now we have enough besiegers for this attack. Two hundred and fifteen mounted marksmen. So just three camps to go. This one's already under attack. Uh, as soon as it's occupied by this attack, we can send other generals that won't be intercepted to take on these last two camps. So, we have a sacrifice attack here. Unrecruit from the Gemini, the younger Gemini general, followed up by an attack from Merry Christmas. So that one's got to reach first. So that's plenty of leeway. So that's it. So we're almost ready for the last attack. Forty-three swordsmen. That's fine. It's going to be intercepted by this camp, so we're going to have to wait for this general down here. Should be enough. So again, that's a sacrifice attack, and then Boris two and nine. 
Doesn't matter, this one will do. As I say, the numbers are great. I'd use them. But there will come a time when, because of human error, or uh, you've actually had a general uh, inadvertently killed in an attack where you didn't get the numbers right, um, you just pick up a substitute. There's plenty of generals. So here we've got 195 Matty Marksman, last attack of the game. Then he goes. Now while we're waiting, um, what I would normally do, because I would expect to be relaunching uh, an adventure within a couple of minutes of finishing this one on the scout run, um, I would normally go back over these generals and I would look at my my chart, my solutions, and then I would find, for example, this one. This is General 103. Find out what they need. 175k. That's his first attack in the game, so we do that. So now he's set. Send home. So he'll be he'll be waiting for me by the time this adventure ends. This is 109. So you just go through all your generals now and just uh, replenish them. This is 109. What's his first attack? 52 MS. 123. This one's 30 mounted swordsman. 145. Right, done. Send it home. Last attack about to go in, so you still time to do more. Obviously the Marys are quite important. So this is 216. Oh, yep. Even if they don't need replenishing, sending them home early. You know, they're travelling home, they're going to get back faster, be ready. But we've already completed, so we've been quick about it. So that's gone. The adventure's over. Now, one thing I always say to check before you hit the quest completed button is to return home and to double check whether or not you're on premium. Because you can start an adventure when you're on premium but it can lapse. Yeah, I'm not on premium, you see. So I'm missing out. 50% XP and lots of resources. So I shall go back here, stick premium on, return to the adventure. There we go, premium's on. Visit. There we are, we finished the adventure. Return home. And here's what we got, 485,000 points, plus the premium we just added gives another 242,000. So that's six, that's 720,000 points for this adventure. And you can see 300 grout, 2,250 magic beans, 12,000 platinum, mahogany logs, barrows X, uh, we've got 300 grout, 15 adventure tales and 600 oil seed which is welcome or which are welcome and obviously some star coins as well not bad for 30 35 minutes work so just click that that's done and that's the adventure complete so i'm going to finish there there's that was quite a rough run through because i'm rusty and I just completed a new map with new numbers on, so th there was a certain lack of familiarity with the numbers. <laughs> but uh, essentially you should be able to complete that three times within the two hours allotted when you're doing your scout post run. And that should leave you plenty of time to begin a fourth, and then you can complete that one at your leisure, and you'll still get all the benefits from being on the scout run. OK.
Okay, so, oh, it's a little bonus there. So that's that done. If you're watching this on YouTube and uh, you found it useful, uh, please give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and uh, please consider subscribing. I'll be doing more adventures in future. And uh, if you've got any requests, please put them in the comments section on YouTube. And, um, you know, I'm quite happy to do any adventures uh, on video. Uh, hopefully they'll be useful for you. And um, thanks. Tune in next time. Okay, bye.